So in this lecture, we'll talk about relaxing some of the assumptions we made for the hedge algorithm. So as usual, uh, this is supported in part by NSF award CCF 1749864. Okay, so we made two uh, critical assumptions. The first assumption we made was that the total number of time steps for which the algorithm used to play, T, was known to the algorithm. So let's see how to relax that uh, in a setting where the algorithm doesn't know the total number of time steps t. And the second thing we assumed was that the payoff range was in the range 0, 1. So what if the payoff range is in some uh, arbitrary range a, b and critically a and b is unknown to the algorithm. So we want to see whether we can push or modify the hedge algorithm in both these settings. It turns out that by using a very simple technique called the doubling trick, we will be able to handle both these scenarios. So uh, henceforth, we will just not worry about uh, these being uh, binding assumptions. In a the sense, they are kind of easy to handle even if these assumptions don't hold using this doubling trick. And we'll see what this doubling trick is. Importantly, this doubling trick is applied in many, many scenarios. So it's applicable in various scenarios. For instance, it's also applicable to all the bandit algorithms we will see. Uh, so doubling trick is a fairly general strategy which you might want to try. Okay, so let's look at the first uh, assumption which is the unknown time step t. So this is also sometimes called the anytime guarantee because of the following property. So previously what we proved is that if you fix a time step tau in t, then you ha have the regret uh, of the form that with probability at least 1 minus delta, the regret up till tau, the first tau time steps, which I will denote here by r of tau, uh, is at most square root tau times log of k over delta, right? And critically to achieve this regret, the hedge algorithm needed to know the learning rate eta, and this learning rate eta depended on tau. So it depended on tau as eta was square root of log k over tau. So instead, what we will now show is that using this doubling trick, what we'll be able to get is that simultaneously for every tau and t, uh, the regret up till the first tau time steps r of tau would be at most order of square root tau log k t over delta with probability at least one minus delta. So note that there's an extra t hiding inside the log term this is not uh, too bad because usually delta would be something like 1 over polynomial in t. So uh, up to constants, these two bounds are the same bounds. But critically, what we would get is we would get this bound which is holding for every tau simultaneously and that this t is unknown to the algorithm. So this could be some t which is fixed by the adversary a priori, but it's unknown to the algorithm. So our goal will be to see how do we get regret of this form. So the strategy is going to be fairly natural. So let's say n is the smallest value such that uh, t is greater than 2 to the n minus 1. So t is, so n is the largest power or like t is greater than the largest power of 2 uh, where and n is the logarithm of that. And here n and t is unknown to the algorithm. Okay. So what is this doubling trick? So the doubling trick is fairly natural. So you split uh, you split the algorithm into many epochs. So let me call the, let me index each of these epochs by 0, 1, so on up till n. And within each epoch, set the learning rate eta of ep to be square root log k divided by 2 to the power ep. Right? So in epoch ep, your learning rate is square root log k by 2 to the power ep. And then just run hedge with uh, this new this learning rate in between the rounds 2 to the ep and 2 to the ep plus 1 minus 1. So essentially, you're just dividing the total number of time steps into logarithmic, into uh, exponentially increasing time steps. And then you're running hedge uh, in each of these steps. So this is 0. So you're, uh, this is say 2, 4, 8, and so on. And you're running hedge within each, within each such episode uh, or epoch with a different learning rate. And here the learning rate is just e of that particular 
uh, that particular uh, epoch. So it's a fairly natural algorithm. Uh, this, and this uses hedge as a black box. So hedge requires only a learning rate data. We are providing the data and then we are running hedge in a black box manner. So this can be used for other algorithms instead of hedge where you will run some other algorithm in black box, which is why this doubling trick is kind of a general technique. Okay, so let's see what kind of bounds this gets. So the theorem is that with probability at least one minus delta, we have for every tau belonging to t simultaneously, the to cumulative regret between time step one to tau of ft of a star minus t equal to one to tau ft of at is at most the order of square root tau times log of kt over delta, right? So this is this is going to be uh, this is going to be the regret guarantee we get. And here you might ask, what is this a star? So the a star is the best action for the if you fix the instance to be from one to tau. So in particular, the a star can depend on various tau. Uh, it can be different for different tau. Uh, so maybe we should, let me just give a subscript tau to this. So the best action for time, for the if you fix the instance from one to tau, what is the best action in hindsight? Okay, so let's see the proof. The proof is gonna be fairly straightforward. So look at some ep epoch, Two to the ep and two to the ep plus one minus one right so the length of this epoch is uh, two to the ep so there are two to the ep number of time steps and the previous hedge guarantee implied that between time steps two to the ep and two to the ep plus one minus one uh, the best action in hindsight for this particular set right so for this episode or this epoch what is the best action minus the cumulative uh, regret in this uh, epoch by the algorithm. So the difference of this was at most 8 times square root 2 to the ep times log of k over delta, right? And this, so uh, here I'm writing uh, this to be as kt over delta and I'm saying that the probability is 1 minus delta over t. Same thing, so that we, finally we will take a union bound over all t time steps. So I'm writing it in a slightly modified form. Okay, so this was what we saw so far this is a standard hedge guarantee for this particular uh, time interval. So what is our strategy going to be then? So we look at two time, two kinds of tau. So the first tau is a tau that is a power of two. So some tau is two to the L for some L in zero, one to N. And we look at another tau, which is in between two epochs. So it's between to the L and two to the L plus one. And the tau is somewhere in between. And we'll show that in each of these uh, two scenarios, the total cumulative regret R of tau is at most order of square root tau log of kt over delta with probability 1 minus delta over t. So for, e for each such tau, we'll show this thing and then there are t at most t such cases. So if you take a union bound over t, all such t cases, we get the required theorem. You get that with probability 1 minus delta. R of tau for every tau is at most O of square root tau log kt over delta, all right? So this is going to be the proof sketch. So uh, our goal is now to prove both these statements here. Okay, so let's look at now the scenario where tau is two to the L for some L equal to zero, uh, zero to one N. So tau is a power of two. So this is going to be a simple scenario. So uh, what we want to bound is the total cumulative regret up till time tau. So from time t equal to one to tau, we want to look at the difference between the total payoff, total cumulative payoff obtained by the best action in hindsight for this tau instance, minus the total uh, reward obtained by, obtained by the algorithm in these t time steps. So note that you could write the first expression here. You could write this first expression here as uh, summing over each of the epochs ep from 0 to l and the time steps 2 to the ep to 2 to the ep plus 1 minus 1 of ft times a star for that epoch. So this sum here is going to be larger than this because we are assuming that the payoffs are between 0 and 1. So by convexity of minimum this holds uh, and then this is the second term here is the same as these two terms are the same. Now uh, you can write again t equal to 1 to tau as a sum over epochs times the num total time steps within the epoch. So 
This is just equal to sum over a perk from 0 to L, sum of t from 2 to the EPT to the EP plus 1 minus 1 of ft of a star of ep minus ft of at all right so this sum here is same as this sum it's just we're just splitting it the sum as uh, regret for each of the epoch and uh, from regret guarantee for each of the epoch we know that with probability at least 1 minus delta over t uh, you have that this expression here this expression here is equal to this is at most this right so this is at most 8 times square root 2 to the power ep log kt over delta and summing from ep equal to 0 to l. So this expression here, so this is just a geometric series. So if you sum this geometric series, this is just going to be some order of square root 2 to the l times log of kt over delta, right? So uh, this is a simple geometric series and we just sum, sum the geometric series. And recall that 2 to the L is exactly tau. So this is essentially order of square root tau times log kt over delta. So and this proves it for uh, the case when tau is a power of 2, right? So we critically use the fact that in each of these ep epochs, you, the hedge guarantee holds. And then we just summed it up over all the different epochs. Okay, so now uh, how do we show this when uh, tau is not a power of 2, right? So the problem with the, uh, the fact that tau is not a power of 2 is that we know that guarantee is only, the hedge guarantee only holds for at the end of this epoch because we are uh, in for each epoch we are assuming that the hedge will run for the entire time horizon. But a very simple trick will show you that the regret obtained up till any point in the middle of an epoch is as good as the regret obtained at the end of the epoch. And what is this trick? The trick is as follows. So note that a uh, hedge works against an adaptive adversary, right? So it works against an adaptive adversary. And so look at an adversary who, who considers the following instance. So the instance up till tau is the same as within the epoch is same as the one in this your instance. But from there on the adaptive adversary just sets every payoff to be zero for every action. So for all action, all time steps greater than tau, the payoff is zero. So what does this bias? This says that the total, uh, the, a, for any action A star, the total uh, payoff between time steps 2 to the L to tau is going to be the same as the total uh, payoff of A star in the entire epoch, in, in the entire epoch, right? Because uh, after, after tau, it's all going to be zero. So these two sums are the same. Likewise, uh, if you look at the total uh, payoff obtained by the algorithm, uh, the, the sum from 2 to the L to tau ft of at is going to be the same as the sum t equal to 2 to the L uh, to, to, to the end of the epoch, which is 2 to the L plus 1 minus 1 ft of at. These two are going to be the same. So what does this imply? So this implies that r of tau, which is just the difference between this term here and this term here, is same as r of 2 to the L plus 1 minus 1, which is the difference between this and this. And we already saw from the previous uh, slide that r of 2 to the l plus 1 minus 1 is at most order square root 2 to the l plus 1 times log of kt over delta with probability 1 minus delta, right? So this holds with probability 1 minus delta over t. And note that tau is uh, at most uh, 2 to the, I mean tau is at least 2 to the l plus 1. So therefore, uh, two, 2 to the L plus 1 is like 2 times tau, at most 2 times tau. So therefore, this is still order of square root tau times log kt over delta. And so this proves, this finishes the proof when tau lies between 2 to the, is lies in the middle of an epoch. So here we use this uh, kind of zeroing out trick, which is like a, which is like a cute trick. And therefore, we now showed that this simple doubling strategy uh, gives, you, gives you the same asymptotic bound as what hedge gave if you know the total time horizon. So here I've kind of been like sloppy with these constants and I've been hiding with the, hiding the constants. But there's an alternate strategy which people usually use which gives the right constants. It is what is called as the adaptive learning rate. So hedge as an algorithm uses the same learning rate at every time step 
the learning rate eta which is fixed a priori and it depends on the time horizon so instead consider a version of an hedge where the the learning rate is not the same in every time step instead at every time step t belonging to capital t the hedge uses the following learning rate it uses the fact that eta t is square root log k divided by t right so to set this particular learning rate here or uh, it need not know the total number of time horizon it just needs to know the current time step t which it can keep a counter and know what it is so adaptively at every time step the learning rate changes and i will leave this as an exercise you can show using the like you, you can just run through the same uh, analysis of hedge and the doubling trick which we saw to show that this strategy yields a total regret r of t which is order square root t log k over delta with probability 1 minus delta critically you would get much uh, like improved constants which i have not shown here which is hidden inside this o notation and this is a useful algorithm which people use which gives you the optimal constants right so uh, i will leave this as an exercise for you to try out uh, try to analyze this and show this theorem okay so now let's look at uh, the second part again using doubling trick so the first uh, so what if the payoff ranges are different from 0 1 and suppose they are also unknown right so before that let's look at the known payoff range so suppose the payoff range is known but it's not 0 1 but the range is uh, some alpha beta so for some known values of alpha and beta the range is in alpha beta excuse me so it's it's a known value alpha beta which is known to the algorithm right okay so what how do we handle this so we'll handle this by scaling and shifting such that the, the algorithm creates a pseudo payoff and these payoffs lie in 0 1 so what exactly do we mean by that so the algorithm receives a payoff ft of a so instead the algorithm uh, constructs a pseudo payoff ft prime of a which just subtracts alpha and divides by beta minus alpha so what we end up doing is that this ft prime of a lies in 0 1 and now we can just simply run f uh, you can simply run hedge by giving ft prime of a to the to the hedge algorithm and we know that you get standard guarantees on ft prime of a from what we just saw in the previous lectures since that lies between 0 and 1 and then a simple algebra would show that the regret you get on your true payoff which is ft would be of the following form that with probability 1 minus delta the regret term here on the left hand side which is ft of a star minus ft of at summed from time t equal to 1 to t will be at most beta minus alpha times square root t log k over delta so the additional term beta minus alpha shows up here rest all was whatever hedge guarantee gave when it was between 0 and 1 so if your if the if the length of the range increases by say beta minus alpha your regret gets a multiplication factor of beta minus alpha so what do we do now if the payoff ranges are unknown right if alpha and beta are unknown so you just learned a new trick called the doubling trick so we'll use the same thing so let's say uh, we alpha and beta are unknown and we'll use a doubling trick on this value m so let m be this uh, value which is between which is powers of 2 so the algorithm will start with 2 to the l where l is 0 1 and so on and you just let alpha to be minus m and beta to be plus m and any time you receive a feedback ft of a which is either strictly smaller than minus m or strictly larger than m then you just update your m to by multiplying it by a power of 2 So it's a simple strategy. So m is kind of like the maximum absolute value of your payoff, and you're just using the doubling trick on the maximum absolute value. So I won't prove this, but using the same uh, proof which we just saw for uh, for the case of unknown time horizon, you can show the following statement that with after t time steps with probability at least one minus delta, we have the the regret the cumulative regret from for the t time steps which is r of t here is at most uh, 
beta minus alpha times square root t log kt by delta, right? So you get the same uh, regret bound up to constants uh, as you would have got in case you knew the you knew the range beta and alpha. So I would leave this as an exercise uh, for you to prove. And with that, we conclude the lecture on uh, how to use the doubling trick to uh, kind of get past some of these assumptions on known quantities. So as I said, doubling trick is an important quantity or an important trick you want to keep in mind. And anytime you don't know a particular quantity, but you think it can be estimated online, so it's a strategy you might want to try.